where we would it be more, smart for an investor to come in, pick up land out west, and start building warehouses out? The thing is, is the the zoning, the county or the city municipalities ha haven't thought about that at all. And most of the zoning right now, as we speak, it's either agricultural or for residential. Right. And again, that's where we're going to hit a uh, sort of like a, a need more for warehousing. So that's a that's a great you know a way of thinking. Hey, let me be the guy who goes out there and develop this land. But currently, right now, the zoning laws don't allow. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Kerr's Real Talk radio show. So um, I just changed the name of the show today. Yeah, uh, yeah I was like, yeah, yeah, you're my first host on the new show. Okay. So, so the reason for that is that I, we've historically been the Kerr's Real Estate Show, right? Mm -hmm. Which is great. And we've been doing this, I think, four years now we've had shows out. And so now we're going to be the Kerr's Real Talk Show. What do you think about that? I like the name. I kind of like it. Yeah. Right? We do the Real, Real Talk, Talk Conference, right? right? We hashtag Real Talk often. And guests like you, when we bring them on, it's not like we're talking crap, right? Like, it's Real it's, Talk. It's Real it Talk about real estate. Right. So um, so if, you, if you've missed out, I'd really love it if you go to davidkurz360.com. That's David, K-U-R-Z, 360.com. Check out my website. This is a link to all the different platforms that I'm on. And go to the YouTube, man. We've uploaded some very recent, uh, very interesting videos talking about market shift, market dynamics, disruptions in the market, so forth and so on. And I think today uh, we're going to spend some time talking about what's happening in the, real, in the, in the commercial real commercial estate. Commercial real right? estate. That is true. So um, before we get there, a uh, couple shout outs. First shout out is to our major partners here at Curse Real Estate. It's New World Title, Caliber Home Loans, and Max Home Inspections. We appreciate everything that you guys do for, for me, for us, for our agents, and the way that you take care of our agents. We greatly appreciate you here at Curse Real Estate. Um, and then I want to give a huge shout out to our newest agents. So we have uh, Jensen Chen, we have Rebecca Garcia, Tangela, Gloria, Jenny, Jessica Perez, and Tony Migueles. Welcome to the company. Man, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So today we signed our 98th agent, Oof. which is huge, right? Yes. We're almost at that 100 mark. So we, I put a contest, right? And I, Not a contest. I, really, like, I put a comment out that says, what do we give our 100th agent? Like when we hire the 100th agent, like what do we give them, right? Like, you know, do we have like, uh, you're our 100th customer confetti coming down through the door? A little plaque or something. Or something. Yeah. Um, There's got to be a little plaque or yeah. something that's like, they could put dude, in their dude, desk. I was number 100, right? Correct. Like if you ask like Lori, Lori Scott, Lori Scott knows her number. I think she's like 26 or 27. So she'll hashtag that. She'll be like number 27. Okay. You know? Uh, so very impressed. Thank you, Lori, for all your love. Um, but huge, huge stuff happening. So what's happening, dude? What's happening in the commercial world, in the market? Uh, a lot of things happening. And what I mean by that is let's talk specifically uh, warehousing. So being the VP of the commercial division, we do help our clients buy, sell, or lease anything that's commercial property, whether it's investment or on your occupied, right? Right. So in that realm, warehousing, that's something that's becoming uh, the hot topic. And what do I mean by that? We don't have enough. We don't have enough warehousing to suit all of our clients. And what that means is whether you're a small guy, mechanic type deal, or you're looking to expand your business, uh, whether you're in the uh, manufacturing, um, business, yeah. we're lacking warehouse space. And right. what's happened, it's very simple, right? Most of the warehousing uh, used to be back east, right? Near the I-95 corridor, uh, near the river, but all those spots got bought out, right? Right. Winwood used to be all industrial. Alapata, all industrial. Got all bought out. It got all bought out by investors who are looking to do what's called flex space or uh, change it into a or more development space. Development or... space. Right. Correct. So as that's happening, we keep moving far west, and uh, we're near the cusp of uh, reaching the Everglades. So warehouse space is something that uh, it's needed a lot here as, as we grow as a city, as you know, more density. Soon it's going to be called gator space. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> correct. Um, in fact, uh, you know, they're, they're, doing, they're trying to do the expansion of, of the highways right. all the way out there just for that same reason. So going to the warehouse right now, average price per square foot is about $250 uh, 
uh, per square foot overall, right? Central Miami market, uh, lease space is about $18 a square foot. Five years back, it was around 10 to 12. Now we're up to 18. Wow. Um, no matter the type of warehouse, right? Obviously, the more modern, the more costly it's going to be. So you have big developments that are taking shape still uh, west of the airport, some parts in Doral, Metley, it's reaching uh, Hialeah, uh, same thing south um, in the south area. So warehouse space seems to be sort of like the hot topic right now. Uh, where we Would it be smart it. for an investor to come in, pick up land out west, and start building warehouses out? The thing is, is the, the zoning. The county or the city municipalities ha haven't thought about that at all. And most of the zoning right now, as we speak, it's either agricultural or for residential. Right. And again, that's where we're going to hit a, a sort of like a, a need more for warehousing. So that's a, that's a great you know, a way of thinking. Hey, let me be the guy who goes out there and develop this land. But currently right now, the zoning laws don't allow that. Right. So could be an opportunity uh, if any of our you know, uh, county guys, municipality guys. I hope you guys are paying attention to this very special edition. Yes. Uh, <laughs> th that's something that, that's going to be heavily needed, at, again, as we grow as a city, as, as the state also grows, even the southern part, including Broward County as well. That's where most of the businesses are, are moving now. Uh, right. for, for that same fact that, you know, there's not enough space here in the Miami-Dade market. So South Broward, uh, even parts of West Broward, Western Miramar, um, they're running out of space as well. That's insane. All right, so that's the warehouse market. How's the office market? Office, office space is, like, um, untouchable right now. Correct. Uh, there's so few places where you get offices. It's either Brickle downtown, parts of the Gable, South Miami, and that's all you have. So as we speak... Uh, there's a lack of uh, office space right now. So what happens is all these existing buildings, class A, class B, are charging high rent um, for um, small spaces and lack of uh, parking. So we were, we were looking for an office for somebody, mm -hmm. and, and we started to compare for like what we pay here. Correct. I hope my landlord's not watching. And, uh, and we were like, man, we're in good position. You Correct. Know? And we start looking at some of the other places out there, 37 Forty-two dollars a square foot for Just office about. space for like, and and I'm talking twelve hundred square foot spaces, fifteen hundred square foot spaces. How how can they command these types of high prices right now? Uh, because for the same reason is you you have the demand out there is that there's not enough to go around. No new office buildings have been built, even though the city of Miami has done this mixed use yeah. where you have retail at the bottom, office, and then maybe some and then uh, some units above some it. units above it for for residential use, but. Uh, most of the developments are still in the same area, which is Brickell and downtown, where they're high prices to begin with. So that could be an opportunity maybe um, sort of outside of the realms, outside of the gables, outside a bit outside of the uh, South Miami markets, uh, even in the Grove. The Grove is going through a whole new phase, um, both in retail and office space. And again, they're, they're demanding high prices. Okay. Now, we've got warehouses, a real hot topic right now, office space almost untouchable mm -hmm. in Miami right now. Um, where does that leave us in the rest of the commercial market, industrial and things of that nature? Um, well, industrial, there's still some, some opportunities uh, overall in big warehouses. Right. Um, where there is for investors, multifamily. Right. Multifamily right. seems to be the hot topic uh, as which, far as... Which is almost uh, pushing more towards residential, right? Because Correct. now you're it's commercial because it's... Larger multifamilies is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about your three-unit place down the street. Right. We're talking about 20 units, 30-unit spaces. Correct. So we're talking about any building that has 30, 40 doors. Uh, what that means is those are the units, right? There's, there's far few in between here. And most of these buildings were built back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Yeah. So uh, they might be located in a great area. But this is where investors come in buy these buildings out, renovate them completely, gutter them out, and you make them just as new as some of these uh, high-end condos are being built. And the rents have gone up steadily. So there was, there was a lot of talk at one time about um, developers coming in into Miami and creating apartment buildings, really similar to what you would find in New York City, Los mm -hmm. Angeles, and maybe some, uh, you know, Chicago and other major metropolitan locations. And I didn't really see it happen. Like, there's some rental buildings along the river and stuff like that, but not at the extent that we expected. And that kind of surprised me because I always thought 
a rental building in Miami is a hit. Yeah. It's a hit. And with the way that the rental prices have moved in the upward position, and, and let's face it, if the market shifts and somebody loses their house, more than likely, more times than none, they're not going to lose their house and go move under the bridge. They're more than likely going to lose their house and say, okay, I'm going to have to rent something that I can afford now, right? And so even if the market shifts, there's going to be a high demand for rentals. And there is. Um, there is. That's, that's still the rental market when it comes to uh, on the cost of residential and commercial. Um, prices have continued to gone up. Again, just because the availability of housing uh, between a certain niche, 300 to 500,000, there's a very few of those houses still available. So right. uh, those are the types of uh, clientele that would probably most likely rent in the meantime. So what's happening there is that, yes, you don't have those apartment buildings that you talked about that we see in New York, Chicago, uh, normally your typical big cities, right? Mm -hmm. So what's happening is you have smaller units uh, renting for those high big amounts. And I think right now it also has to do with, again, going back to zoning, where the zoning only allows you to go either four stories or six stories. Right. If you're a big investor, you want to go higher yeah, and make these yeah. nice, you know, beautiful rental communities. Only a few places are, are allowing that, right? And what I mean is you have to be in a main street, whether it's uh, Flagler, whether you're down by the river, or even up by Biscayne. Are the and only then the ones price of the land is so expensive that it's like... Correct. So Man, I, when do I when do I return my investment? Right. Like for when for, for an investor, it's it's uh, it's a risk in that that they take. However, once they take that risk, uh, build these nice, beautiful rental um, communities, and, and these and these rental communities are like extravagant, full size gyms. Correct. Beautiful pools. Like they're uh, really the amenities that come with carpet. it now and then, nowadays yeah. is is you have high quality. Amenities. It's not what I was used to growing up in the Bronx, right? Like you know, my rental building was like. We had a gate, a door, another door, just to get into the lobby so you could take the elevator that works 60% of the time. Up to your Very different. And maybe a tree or two, right? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so no, nothing on trees. But nowadays, yeah, they, they, they do a great job. These developers are, are very caught up with what uh, the, the, consumers the consumer wants. And listen, it's, it's also a trend that uh, generations, too. So the newer generation loves to rent. Just like they love to rent their vehicle, or they they love to make it less to own and more to rent. That seems to be the the, the way these generational younger people between you know are, uh, young professionals, twenty five to thirty five. Right. So you have that market that no one's really tapping, so to speak. And again, it, I, I I think it's for the lack of no one really wants to take that risk. Right. But eventually, you have somebody whether coming from the north, uh, from the New York market, Chicago market. Or even more traditionally in Europe, that's the way it is. You have these big rental communities of blocks of them. Yep. Uh, so I would say it's just a matter of time before that happens. Uh, but I hope it, we're alive when it happens because uh, we've been hearing about it. Correct. We've been hearing about it for years. <laughs> um, but, you know, again, if, if our, our, our city uh, representatives, our county representatives want to um, help out. And they, they really can. need to do a better job at that. They do. Right. Uh, so go vote. Ladies and gentlemen, we talked about this earlier. Yeah, go vote. I don't care which side you or you're on. If you don't vote, you can't complain. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. That's basically yes. what it's about. And there's stuff on there about your homestead taxes and everything else. All right. Whether you it benefits know. you or not, that's that's to be you know determined by you. But determined by you. But but go have a voice, right? Absolutely, because if not, what happens is um, with any municipality, if they don't see that uh, it benefits here nor there. They don't take the stress. They're not going to take the next ride. They're of not. course not. They're not. You wouldn't either. Right? Absolutely. Like if, if you had a, a, a plan of attack and you couldn't see the benefit one way or the other, you're not going to take the step. You're not going to spend the money. You're not going to put in the work. Yeah. You know? I mean, um, just as, as the residents complain, a uh, perfect example is with the music festival that got moved from downtown right. after 20 years of doing it, right. which brought in tons of money to the city. So a lot of business owners that I know that I've helped out lease space down in the downtown area, they're kind of shocked how the city kind of turned around, but that's because the residents complained uh, just because of the masses coming to this festival. Yeah. Most likely it's going to move up to the Hard Rock area, I believe. Uh, you know, David Ross always has an open pocketbook, so yep. um, you know he's going to benefit from that. But again, if you don't take action, vote one way or the other, uh, I think that's the only way you get, you get your voice heard. That's right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was a uh, very special edition. We try to do this once a month.
All right. Um, yeah. And we're going to be very focused on getting that done. Um, you know, very happy to have Denny as our vice president of commercial here at Kurz Real Estate. And uh, if there's anything you ever need or any questions that you have for Denny, call the office, 786-529-5273. They'll make sure to give you all his contact mm -hmm. information or they'll transfer you to, to him right here in the office. You'll often find them here bright and early at around 7, 7.30 in the morning. Um, so, yeah. So um, anything that you need on the commercial side, he's here to help you uh, from anything from referrals to questions to just participation. If you need help with something, let us know. We'd be happy to help. And uh, again, if you're interested in Curse Real Estate and you're a buyer, seller, or an agent that's just interested in our company and our assistance and our help, reach out to us, KurzRE.com. That's K-U-R-Z-R-E.com. Call us, 786-529-5273. If you'd like to learn more about the company and joining us as real estate agents, check out JoinKurzRE.com. Um, and for me, David Kurz360, check me out. You got anything you want to put out? What's your cell phone number? Tell everybody. It's uh, 305-609-2406. You can reach me direct, send me a text. Normally respond within a minute or two. All right. And happy November, everybody. You guys take care. Real talk.